Hi everyone, welcome to Bell's Books. I'm Carly and today I'm going to be talking you through my February wrap up. So talking about the books that I read in February. There were five, yes, four books uh, physic, that I read physically, one audiobook, the first audiobook of the year that I've got through. <laughs> so um, before we start, I just want to apologise if you, there are lots, there's lots of noise because I have, I mean, this is nice. I have a crackling candle here in the background, my witch candle, which is excellent, smells lovely. I got it from a nice shop on Etsy. This is not gifted or sponsored or anything. I just like really, I just really enjoy my candle, but it's one of those woodwick things. So it's making a little crackling noise. Also, Dan is in the bath and watching Brooklyn Nine-Nine because he's that extra, so there's that noise. Katie is down here snoring because she's just had her dinner and she snores very loudly after her dinner. Also, there's a very loud pheasant outside that is making that croaking noise. So, all of the sounds. Apologies if that is distracting. Let's start with the first book that I finished in February that I don't have because it was library copy and I've taken it back. I will insert a picture here. It is The Mermaid of Black Conch by Monique Roffey. This won the Costa Prize. Did I get that right? I think it won the Costa Prize for Best Novel. It was also shortlisted for quite a few other prizes, including the Goldsmiths. Um, so this has had a lot of hype, has been talked about a lot. So you probably know about this already, but I will give you a short summary. It is a mermaid story. It is the story of Achaea, who is a mermaid, but not like a mermaid for all time. She was a woman, an ancient woman, that was cursed by the women in her tribe for being too beautiful and having a beautiful singing voice and distracting all of their husbands. So she was cursed to be a mermaid and has spent centuries living under uh, the sea at the depths of the ocean. So she's from a very ancient time. And she is, our story takes place in 1976 in, in the Caribbean island of Black Conch. She is drawn to the surface by David, a fisherman who is playing the guitar and um, she is drawn to him. And then um, there is the first the first chapter. I will put kind of a trigger warning in here for some horrendous stuff. So the first chapter is really hard to read because it is the tale of when she comes to the surface thinking it's David in his boat and it's actually some American fisherman and they catch her. They like hook her. And this is one of the most traumatic scenes I've ever read. Um, and I think Simon Savage said it was kind of akin to a rape. It like it was it's really kind of difficult to read. So they catch her and they haul her onto the boat and take her back because they think, well, they're going to make a load of money out of her. They're going to sell her um, for experiments. And they are just horrible, horrible people. Um, and anyway, so the story is David then saves her from this being strung up on the jetty and takes her back to his house. And he thinks he's going to just chuck her back in the sea because all of the local people of this place think that no good can come of the fact that she's been pulled out of the sea. She needs to get back in there. But when he gets her to his house, she starts to turn back into a woman, which was her original form. And it is the story of that and David and Achaea learning about each other because she can't speak um, the language that they speak. The text is written from like three different perspectives. So we've got a third person narration, which is telling about all the different characters. We've got diary entries from David, who is looking back on the episode years later. And we've also got Achaea's narrative, which is told in prose. Um, and it's kind of in her, the, the kind of the English that she's learning as she lives with David. So there's some really interesting characters in this novel. I enjoyed it very much. I, apart from that horrific scene at the beginning, which is really difficult to read, I loved this book. I thought it was fantastic. It does so much. It was it's only like two hundred pages, but it does a lot in in such a short space of time. So you're really I found myself really involved in these in, in these character stories between Achaea and David and what's going to happen to her. She's turning into a woman. What's going to happen? What's he going to do with her? 
he starts to fall in love with her and there's also um two other characters that um that live on the island and i have immediately forgotten her name it's miss rain her name is miss rain she is the white woman that lives on the island that owns most of the island so her family presumably were like um owners of the plantation that on that island so she owns a lot of the land and is therefore resented by a lot of the population of the island um she has a deaf son reggie who um instantly has a connection with the mermaid when they meet because she can't speak and he talks in sign language and they immediately start um like learning to communicate with each other which i really liked i like that relationship i thought that was fantastic um so there's a lot of tension on this island and the relationships between all of the people that live there kind of there's a there's a lot of tension so david has a really nasty neighbor <laughs> she's so horrible and she comes snooping around to see what's going on with this woman living with david um so there's kind of that it's like a almost like a mystery like you want to you want to see what's hap going to happen um and my heart was in my mouth for for a lot of it as it was building to the end is so it's a fantastic story but also there's a lot of um complex issues in there to do with like the legacy of colonialism and slavery and um the way that we hurt each other like Achaia is cursed by women in her village and it it's a commentary on the way that women are um mean to each other th through like you know various different jealousies and uh that kind of thing so it was it was just fantastic i really enjoyed it um and it made me think a, a lot um i you know when you put down a book and you're like oh you almost have like a book hangover like i i need to think about this for a little while um so yes it was fantastic would highly highly recommend um okay so there was that and then what did i read to finish next i think i then finished weather by jenny offal again a very another short book i read this for my book club and i know this is like people who i've seen lots of kind of not bad reviews but people have just gone meh about it but i really enjoyed this book i really liked it um it's told in vignettes which i know you know pe people aren't always up for that so in these short snippets it is about lizzie benson who is a librarian in a university and it's about her and her family. So she's got a husband and a son. She's also trying to deal with her brother who um, ha struggles with drug addiction. And so there's like a, a side story about her brother and his new partner and having a baby. Her brother has like intrusive thoughts about, um, so when he's like looking after the child, he's just always worried that something terrible is going to happen to the child. Meanwhile, Lizzie is going down a slippery slope of, um, what's it called? I think they call it like prepper, where people are obsessed with like the end times and preparing for the like the apocalypse or whatever so she's getting more and more mildly obsessed with uh like because it's all about climate change um about how to prepare to take care of her family and look after her son when when the the world is <laughs> getting too hot to cope um She's also working for one of her friends, answering letters, answering emails. Um, her friend runs a podcast, which I, again, thinks to talk about climate change. Um, so she's got a mixture of people like extremes. So it's this is very much about like polarised uh, views in society. So you've got like the right wingers who deny climate change is happening and then um, the left <laughs> leading people who are really concerned about climate change. Um, and yes, yeah, so there's again a lot going on in this in this book. And I know that, um, yeah, some people are just a bit nah about it, but I really enjoyed the style. I also found it really funny. I've not read anything by Jenny Offill before. I will now seek out um, more of her work because although this was a little bit the t kind of 
I put off reading this when it came out because I knew that it was kind of anxiety inducing. It's also written at the time when Trump was in office and there was all of that going on. So there's talk in here about how women, when Trump was elected, um, women were trying to um, rush to their doctors to get fitted with the coil um, because there was obviously going to be an impact on um, women's autonomy over their own bodily health and reproductive rights. So there's that. Um, and so there's some really dark stuff like that's Dan sorry in here about just the state of the world but also there's some really hilarious bits I'm going to read you the, the, the bit that made me do a Mrs Crabapple laugh is which is when I go ha that thing um I turn the page down now I've lost it okay so <laughs> her and her husband are have a have a mouse problem right so <laughs> that night Eli calls to us hysterically from the kitchen there's a mouse skull under the sink, he says. I give Ben a dark look. We are killing them secretly, I thought. Heavily, he rises to go in there. He gets down on his knees and looks under the sink. But it is only a knob of ginger and we are saved. <laughs> I just thought that was fantastic. So there's little bits of comedy gold in there that just kind of bring it up a little bit. And I don't know whether it's because I read this um, after Trump um, was out of the White House that it didn't feel that anxiety inducing but it's still you know there's a whole commentary about climate change so there's still that but I really enjoyed this um, I think I gave it four stars and I will look out for more of her work okay um, then what did I finish let's talk about spring so um this is a reread, obviously, because I'm doing my PhD on Ali Smith's seasonal quartet. You can see my tabs in here. Um, I read this with the group read along that Sarah over at Hardcover Hearts is running. And this reading experience is so lovely. I'm really enjoying this. Um, <laughs> I will do a separate video on this because I'm doing video videos for my experimental series on all of the Ali Smith seasonal novels. But a very quick summary here. Um, as I always say, Ali Smith novels are not really about the plot. Um, they're not plot heavy books. It's a reflection on the contemporary moment. So these books were all written about what was happening now. So this was published in, was it 2019? I think. Um, and you're reading about stuff that is happening in the moment that you're you're reading it. Yeah, 2019. Um, this one, we said as well um, in the group read, this feels like the one where she gets angry. Um, I mean, she's obviously angry about what's happening anyway, but this is very much about the, um, the immigration and the refugee system, like the way that people that come to the UK for asylum and refugee are treated like criminals because one of our main characters, Brittany or Brit, is um, a DCO in an immigration centre. So where people are detained in cells in horrific conditions because they have come here trying not to die, seeking a, seeking a life that, that they're not persecuted or surrounded by war. Um, and so it's looking at Brit as a character who is in one of these centres and perpetuating this terrible behaviour against these people who are being held. And um, she encounters a, almost like a magical child character, Florence or Flo, um, who meets her in a train station and starts asking her questions and then takes her on a journey, a spontaneous journey up to Scotland because Brit starts to feel like protective over this young girl who is 12 and on her own. Um, and she Florence is on a mission to go, she's got a postcard and she's like, I have to get to this place and she's going there by herself. So Brit like then feels like she wants to look after her. So she goes with her. So there's those two characters. There is also Richard, who we start out, the, the, the novel starts with Richard 
and he is mourning the death of his friend Paddy. They both worked in television. They were script writers and producers. So there's Richard and Paddy's relationship, which is lovely. I really enjoyed that um, that close relationship there. They were friends for a long time. Um, so there's two kind of storylines and then they come together and meet at a certain point at a train station and it goes on from there. There is also a <laughs> reference to Catherine Mansfield and the poet Rilke. As always with Ali Smith, there's always an artist and the artist who I have immediately forgotten, I think it's Tacita Dean. And one of her pictures is in the back, which is a picture of Cloud there. There's reference to Charlie Chaplin again. And um, this feels more overtly political than the other two. The other two were still very political because it's still reflecting on contemporary times. But this one is very much a slap around the face. There's excerpts in here from what you assume to be um, social media, like tweets and posts on social media, which are extreme opposites. Again, a bit like um, in weather where you've got a completely binarized society between right and left and everyone's angry at each other. Um, there's also um, riffs on Dickens and Shakespeare, as always. I adore these books. Like, I love them. <laughs> I just find them so easy to read, so engaging, so thought provoking, philosophical but not none they're not hard like they're not hard to read and i know that we've we've had so much discussion and obviously i've marked up my book i've got a lot of annotations in here because i'm doing it for research but really at the end of the day they're just such easy books to read and i enjoy reading them so much like i've like reread them obviously and I, every time i reread it i just love it so much oh these books have a special place in my heart would highly highly recommend also it's spring is now is springtime if you haven't read it pick it up now on to my fourth physical book oh shiny shiny there silver sparrow by tayari jones this book broke my heart i adored this book i found that this kind of really resonated with me on an emotional level. <laughs> this is the story of two sisters. Um, their father is a bigamist. So one family is a secret family. The other family is totally unaware of their presence. So um, this is like a split narrative. We first hear from Dana. So we hear about Dana, who is the secret child. Sorry, that's really shiny. Um, the secret child who lives with her mother in an apartment and their father comes to see them, her father comes to see them on Wednesday nights and that's it. And they are the secret family and they have to live their life around the other family. So Dana's life is controlled by what her sister does, even though her sister is not aware of her. So like the school that she goes to is dependent on what her, other, her sister does because her father doesn't want them to be anywhere near each other. Um, he wants to keep this this secret family a secret and it's just heartbreaking because Dana feels like she's second best because she's not the legitimate child even though her father her mother and father are married it's still like it's not a legal marriage because her mother married him second so she's always battling these feelings of inadequacy and um being second best and then we and so is and her mother is like a second choice wife and then we move on to Sharice's story and she knows nothing about this secret family, of course, until, as you would expect, it all kicks off. And it's this, again, my heart was in my mouth reading this. I really enjoyed it. It was such a page turn. I got through it really quickly. Um, it's not a small book, but I just adored it. And the characters are so well drawn you really feel for them and, and the way that um, it switches narratives. Like when I first read Dana's story, I mean, I'm I'm on her side totally. But when it moved to Sharice and you could feel for Sharice as well, when it all comes out and it's like, oh God, what? <laughs> he just 
your heart breaks um yeah it's just amazing and i i i put this down and then like just felt like weeping afterwards um yeah it was amazing and this is the first terry jones i've read i have an american marriage up there i haven't read it yet so that will be high on my list i very much enjoy this it's all the feels um would highly highly recommend okay the last book i have to talk to you about is an audiobook it's the first audiobook of the year that i finally got through and it was the history of magic by um the british library so it was about the exhibition the history of magic exhibition that was on at the british library i want to say in 2017 but i can't remember i went to that exhibition and i loved it it was fantastic and so i wanted to get the book um afterwards because it has images of things from the exhibition in i did wonder how this would work as an audiobook because it's very much here's an image of something in the exhibition and here's some information about it and why it was included and all that kind of stuff but actually it worked so well as an audiobook because they did have descriptions like this is a picture of such and such or whatever and it describes it but also there was lots of different voices in the in the audiobook so there was like the main narrator then there's excerpts from the Harry Potter novels where, that Stephen Fry reads. So little bits of the Harry Potters, which I really enjoyed. Then there's voices of the curators at the museum talking about like why they decided to have certain objects in their exhibition and what they mean and like dissecting them. So there was like <laughs> um, history, like magical books or things that were the spell books and they were talking about their origins and i just found it fascinating it was so interesting and i really enjoyed it and when i finished it i felt like a bit bereft that it was over um so it's my birthday coming up and i've asked for that book for my birthday because i really want to um have a copy and look at those pictures because i just remember from the exhibition it just being a fascinating exhibition and it's one of those things that i feel like i i want to hold it and i want to look at those pictures um, but i really enjoyed the audiobook experience of it so i'm very pleased i finally got through an audiobook this year Woo. so five books in february i mean i did finish this in march it was only a couple of days afterwards so i'm counting it um so I've had a very good reading month in February. I enjoyed all of those very much. Um, the next video I'm going to film, I think, is probably um, about spring, where I'll do a longer um, deep dive into it. Talk to me in the comments below. What have you been reading? Have you read any of these books? Did Silver Sparrow get you in the heart like it got me in the heart? Um, I hope you're all doing very well and I'll speak to you very soon. Bye, guys.